Welcome to the video series, The Operational Amplifier, From Abstraction to Reality. Op amps have high gain and wide bandwidth, but unfortunately, not both at the same time. Op amps can be set to a lower gain and cascaded together to give us the ultimate gain we desire, but there is a major bandwidth limit to that method that must be understood. Why cascade amplifiers? Recall from the Understanding Specs video, we discussed the Unity Gain Bandwidth, or Gain Bandwidth Product. It's the frequency where the open loop gain drops off to 1. Take this example for the TL082 op amp that has a gain bandwidth product of 4 MHz. Let's say we desire a gain of 100 volts per volt, or 40 dB, and an upper cutoff frequency of 400 kHz. We simply divide the gain bandwidth product by the gain to get the high cutoff frequency. Whoa, it's only 40 kilohertz. No problem, we can connect multiple amplifiers in series or cascade with each having a lower gain to get the extra bandwidth. Oftentimes, the amplifiers will have a DC bias when operated on a single supply which requires capacitive coupling between the stages. This limits the bandwidth at the lower end. The gain required of each amplifier is the nth root of the total gain. In this case, for a total gain of 100, we only need each single stage to have a gain of 4.64 volts per volt. An easier way would have been to divide the total required gain of 40 dB by 3 to get an individual stage gain of 13 and a third dB. The lower frequency will be set by the size of the coupling capacitors, and we will design for a lower corner frequency of 20 Hz. The upper corner frequency will be dominated by the op amp gain bandwidth. 4 MHz divided by 4.64 gives us 861.773 kHz. That minus the lower 20 Hz corner gives us a total bandwidth of 861.753 kHz. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't work. Let's probe the output of the first stage to see the gain of 13 and a third dB. Take a leap of faith with me, because right now I'm going to tell you that in order to achieve the total cascaded lower frequency corner of 20 Hz, the individual stage lower corner frequency must be way down at 10.2 Hz. Here's the lower minus 3 dB point at 10.33 dB. At 10.2 Hz, we would expect the output to be the gain of stage 2 at 13.33 dB plus the input of stage 1 at 10.33 dB for a total of 23.66 dB. Let's probe the output of stage 2. Notice we are falling short of that. The profound takeaway is the successive stage roll-off effects reduces the band edges. There is only 10.33 dB of gain added there. I'm pretty simple-minded, so the way I think of it is you would need a flat input from stage 1 to attain the 23.66 dB corner at 10.2 Hz. Finally, probing the output of stage 3, we can see we have achieved the lower corner frequency of 20 Hz. The great news is we can use math to predict these shortcomings. Let's spend a minute reviewing some single pole math. The single pole low pass function is the 20 dB per octave slope of the op amp open loop response because it is internally compensated with a Miller capacitor. Using the voltage divider rule, we get a transfer function of 1 over 1 plus SRC. Doing the same for the high pass function, we get 1 over 1 plus 1 over SRC. This is the interstage capacitive coupling. The corner frequency is where the resistance equals the capacitive reactance. We can substitute omega C for 2 pi FC and therefore replace every occurrence of RC with 1 over omega C. 
Notice the transfer functions are identical, except for the fractions in the denominator, which are inverse to one another. Plugging in j omega for s, we can now set this up to get the magnitude function. We don't need phase. Since we have a ratio of omegas, the two pi's cancel, and we can work with frequency ratios. Also notice the notation FH1 and FL1 are the frequencies associated with the corners of a single stage. FH and FL are the cascaded corner frequencies of which we want to solve for. Since we are cascading, we are multiplying the magnitude transfer functions together depending on the number of stages. We do that by raising the transfer function to n, the number of stages, and set it equal to the magnitude of the 3 dB corner amplitude, which is 1 over the square root of 2. The numerators cancel, squaring each side and taking the nth root. Again, we want to solve for FH and FL. Taking the square root of both sides, then rearranging for FH and FL. With these simple equations, we can determine the upper and lower corner frequencies of a cascaded system with n number of amplifiers, based on the upper and lower corner frequency of each identical individual stage, FL1 and FH1. In this particular case, we will be designing the value of the interstage coupling capacitors so we can rearrange to solve for the individual stage cutoff frequency based on the desired overall cascaded lower cutoff frequency, FL. Here is the p schematic for the three non-inverting stages using the TL082 op amps. They are capacitively coupled with lower corners set at 10.2 Hz. There is no high frequency filtering. It's dominated by the gain bandwidth of the op amps. I generated a spreadsheet to predict the performance. The datasheet unity gain bandwidth of the TL082 is 4 MHz, but I wasn't getting accurate correlation between P spice and the spreadsheet on the upper corner. So I tested the TL082 in P spice open loop. The model had a unity gain bandwidth of 3.85 MHz, so I plugged it in here. We desire a total gain of 100. This calculates the individual stage gain of 4.64, or 13 and a third dB, using the nth root of the total. The individual stage upper corner frequency is the gain bandwidth divided by the individual stage gain, which comes out to 829 kilohertz. Using the upper corner equation we derived, we can get a total upper corner frequency of 422.64 kilohertz. As I said earlier, we want the total lower corner frequency to be 20 hertz. We get a calculated individual stage lower corner frequency of about 10.2 hertz. The spreadsheet calculates the values for the feedback resistors as well as the input resistors and capacitors. The individual stage bandwidth and total bandwidth is calculated. The percent bandwidth achieved after the three stages is cascaded is only 49% of the individual stage. But all is not lost. The bottom cell calculates what the bandwidth would have been if you ran one stage at a gain of 100, which is only 38.5 kilohertz. Here are the simulation results. Stage 1 has 13 and a third dB of gain. In the 3 dB corner, at 10 and a third dB is set perfectly at 10.2 Hz. The upper corner of stage 1 is at the predicted 829 kHz. The total output, with a gain of 40 dB, has markers at its 3 dB corners. And here's the marker values along with the spreadsheet results. These rectangles show the bandwidth lost. There is a very good correlation between the calculated values and the simulation results. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.